Okay, so um, my presentation today is about disability and about the idea of disability. Um, and I call it disability, but not as you think, not as you know it. Um, but I thought I'd start by uh, explaining why I'm standing here today. So a bit about me. Um, and it all started thanks to this photo here. Uh, this is one of my earliest uh, athletic achievements. Um, I won a gold medal at the regional championships, right? Which for most people isn't a big deal, but at that moment in time, that was the biggest medal I, I had. Um, now I have so many of these little tiny medals, I just have a box under my bed. I don't even know what they're for anymore. It's a bit of a shame. I should have, should have labelled them thinking about it, but never mind. Um, these here, these are swim shorts, by the way. So I didn't even have a pair of proper training shorts. These are, these are my swimming trunks I'm wearing now. Very interesting, huh? Uh, then I went to the World Championships in 2006. I uh, came back with a bronze medal from that. Um, so that wasn't my first international, but that was my first international medal. And I think at that point, I kind of thought, hey, no, this, is, this is actually quite good fun. Let me join this. We should do more. <laughs> um, and then I went to Beijing, and Beijing was just the most phenomenal place ever. Um, I don't know how many you can see, but this is me here. Um, I'm sitting down. The reason I'm sitting down is because at that moment in time when that photo was taken, I had two broken bones in my foot. Okay? So uh, it's a bit of a surprise that I won this one. Uh, <laughs> But I did with two broken bones in my foot. There you go. Hand it round. Um, yeah, I need them back at the end. Uh, and I have organised security outside to push people if there's a problem. Okay, so please make sure it gets back to me. Um, and then I went to World Champs in um, 2011. Uh, I just wanted to show you this race. Um, well, fast forward it a little bit, because there's a lot of talking goes on. Commentators like listening to themselves, I'll figure that out. Uh, OK, here we go. So the links to watch are um, me here. This is So Well Way, who's the world record holder. And uh, the guy on the other side of me is Roman Pavlik, who won the gold in Beijing. Thank you. Now, um, that race was so close that I actually have uh, a copy of uh, the finishing strip. Um, um, and the reason I have a copy of the finishing strip is because I have to prove to people how close this race was. Okay? So this is me and this is Roman. Right? And as you can see, we're basically crossing the line at exactly the same time. Okay? The difference between second and third place was one one hundredth of a second. Okay? It's the smallest difference they can actually measure. Okay? To give you some idea, because that means nothing to most of you, it takes you approximately three one one hundred of a second to blink. That's pretty cool, I think. I like that fact. <laughs> That's a cool fact, huh? Okay. So then, after that, uh, obviously, the next major competition was London. Um, who wants to see this? Really? 
Yeah. Okay, I've seen it a few times before. So, uh, you want to see this one as well? <laughs> Here you go. Um, interesting enough, uh, I had to edit this because it's too long, but at the beginning there is actually a full start as well. So everybody on tent hooks before it even starts. And um, what's incredible about this space was that I really had such a bad game up to this point. Um, I basically completely screwed up the 100. And so, I really went out there in the 200 having to make it count. And, uh, you know, luckily I managed just to put it off. Um, now that's quite a lot about me, but I really want to talk uh, about disability today because that's what we're all here to discuss. And, um, well, when most people think about disability, they think automatically about wheelchairs. It's become the classic symbol of disability. Yeah? You know, you see the disabled parking bays and they always have a wheelchair in them. Yeah? Or you see, you know, the disabled toilets and they always have a wheelchair on them. Yeah? And my first point I'd like to make today is that we need to get away as a society from this idea that disability is all about being in a wheelchair. Okay, because it clearly isn't. <laughs> okay, there are many other disabilities in the world, right? And um, people don't always think about them. Uh, this is obviously a leg amputee. It's really that the Americans do quite well uh, with leg amps in the Paralympics. Um, I think, I don't know, but I think it's got something to do with the fact that they fight a lot of wars. Uh, so they generally have a lot of leg amps as a result of that. Uh, it's probably true, there's probably quite a lot of truth in that. Um, but one of the things which is most not talked about is disabilities which affect the brain. And the reason for that is because they're generally unseen. They're not immediately obvious. People don't immediately think of them. And I'm sure that there are some people who are alive today who have disabilities of the brain and don't even know about them. Yeah? And I have uh, dyslexia, and uh, I'm also got CP, and I'm also deaf. But probably most people think I'm deaf first because they see my hearing aids. And then if they talk to me, they think he has some kind of speech problem because I have some problems to articulate my speech sometimes, which is the CP. Um, but it's not until you get me to read something or write something that you realise that actually I can't spell either, and I'm terrible at reading. So, uh, you know, I think these are kind of underappreciated disabilities, if you like, you know. Because it's very interesting, actually. One of what I've discovered is that I think, about, um, I think about things differently to how other people think about them. And I'm sure that's because my brain is wired differently to everybody else's. And I have to look at the world differently. I have to problem solve in a different way to everybody else. 
You know, if you want to remember something, you just write it down. Right? I can't write it down. I tried that when I was at uni. I, I, I had a notepad by my bed. And every night I would go to sleep, and if I couldn't get to sleep, it was because I had some idea going around. So I'd write it down in the morning, I'd wake up, and I'd look at it, and it'd be gibberish. I wouldn't know what I'd written. It was just nuts. So in the end, I had to start drawing pictures and diagrams and things like that. Just kind of memory aids rather than just writing it down. Um, this, is, uh, this is an example of what a dyslexic person may see when they look at a page. Basically, what happens is all the words jump about. They change direction. They move about on the page. <laughs> you try reading that and making sense of it. <laughs> Anybody want to try? <laughs> I, I got, last night I was writing this page, I got about here and gave up. I couldn't, couldn't make it make any sense at all. Um, and then you get those who cannot see. And it seems to me that this is one of those disabilities which is of all of them, the one I would least like to have, actually. Um, I think it's pretty tough. Because we live in a world where everything is visual. Everything is visual. The internet is visual. Books are visual. Everything is to do with vision. Okay? So when we're, when we're thinking about disability, we've got to get away from this idea that we're just thinking about the wheelchair. There are many other things out there that we need to consider. And um, I want to ask the question, what do we mean, therefore, when we talk about disability? What do we, what do we truly mean by disabled? And I would like to argue that nobody is actually disabled at all, and that it's, uh, it's through other things that uh, make disability we build in disability into our world. We build steps rather than ramps. We build signs with no braille on them, rather than just building signs with braille. Yeah? Society itself needs to fundamentally change, and we could eliminate disability overnight. It's an interesting idea, isn't it? Hmm? So, the question is, are we ready to change? Are we, are we ready to embrace this, this new idea of disability as being the same but different? Um, I don't know whether you were aware of this, but uh, a lot of, uh, when this program was going on, there was a lot of stuff on Twitter and you know, Facebook and so on about it. And, you know, anybody know what this was a program done by the BBC, I think, on the idea was that you've got a load of disabled people and try to make them into models. Um, and there was a lot of stuff on Twitter about it, and some, some of the stuff was positive, but a lot of the stuff was actually quite negative. It was all about, you know, the, the, the problems, you know, the people's preconceptions of disability. Um, what, what, what I learned from watching this program was that actually disabled people were no different from everybody else. They bitched and moaned like everybody else did, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's about the idea of disability as something which is changeable, I suppose, something which we, can, we, we as a society can, can do something about this. Yeah? But the question is, are we ready to? Are we... Are we, are we are we in a position yet where society can really look at disability and say, you know what, we can do without the steps, we'll build ramps. Yeah? Or we can do without pages and pages of forms to fill in. Trust me, if we thought about it from a dyslexic perspective, we, half the paperwork would disappear overnight. <laughs> and you guys would like that as much as I would, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah? It's true. <laughs> so, 
So I ask the question, what's going on to change this? And a lot of emphasis recently has been put, perhaps not surprisingly, on the Paralympic Games, um, which were pretty amazing. I mean, you know, the crowds were just phenomenal. 80,000 people rocked up every night. And at the end of the game, when the whole thing was over, I think the whole country suffered from withdrawal symptoms for about, well, I think some people still are, actually. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it seems to me that, 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 that it was an incredibly powerful moment. But it was just a moment. And the problem is, is that moments come and go and they pass and they move on. And the problem is, is that if we don't make the most of this moment, we'll lose it forever. The media, the media are hugely prejudiced at the moment against disability. Uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this was a, a BBC children's presenter. It's a very famous case. She had, uh, well, you can see, she's got no arm. And um, basically, uh, parents of the, the, the uh, children that watching the programme wrote in to complain because they felt that it was upsetting their children. And I think that's just so wrong. You know, we should explain to the kids about why it is that she's got no arm. Not write into the programme to say, we want this person taken off the TV. <laughs> yeah? That's not an accepting society. That's not, that's not a world where we, can, where we can really make a difference. And so what can really change? What can really make a difference? And I argue that what can really make a difference is you. You're the start. And if I can get round to every school in the country and I can present this and I can get at least half that class to, to agree with me and change their view, all those little bits add up to make a big difference. But it all starts with you. <laughs>